Mayong buntak kaninyong tanaw. Malipayong at law. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, the church. I am so happy this morning because of the privilege given to me by our leader for beneficent, Pastor Benel Pastor Villeneuve. Where is where are you? Thank you for giving me the schedule to preach at the Congress, Sabah School Congress. Also, Pastor Asoy, my good friend, the president of this union, South Philippine Union Conference. I have known him before the foundation of the world. He used to come to Manado many times. When he preached, I was his interpreter. But now, I'm here alone without Interpreter, Pastor Asoy. So I, I'm happy today, this morning, because also Pastor Moana from the GC is here with us. Pastor Kuntara with the wife and all delegates from everywhere of the whole world. Before I speak this morning, I'd like to introduce my wife, my beloved wife, the first and my last wife in the world. Please stand where you are, honey. Please stand where you are. This is my wife. Again, I'm happy this morning because uh, I believe the Lord is calling us to serve our people everywhere. I have served the Lord for about 36 years so far. And praise God. Even only a short time, I was able to work at SSD as youth director. I think I was the shortest youth director in the world, served only six months. But even only six months, I've been in South Philippines three times attending the youth company in Davao two times and in Balulang one time where I was with more than 4,000 young people attending the meeting during the youth company. It was during my time with Pastor Jerry, Jerry Pataliku. Where is he? Where are you now, Jerry? He was my, my counterpart as your director. And also when I was transferred to Strosip, the division. I've been able to visit, I think I believe I have been in six missions or conferences in this union with Pastor Kaderma, with Pastor Napikit, with Pastor Pamunak, with Pastor uh, Jimenez, and uh, many of them. So I've been in uh, Sambuaga, I've been in uh, uh, West Mindanao, I've been in uh, uh, North. Central Minanao Conference and I've been in Union, your Union, so I am happy. You know why I can visit most of the um, mission in this Union? Because the Lord called me to become Seventh-day Adventist and to become his servant. If I am not Adventist, it is impossible for me to visit Philippines because I'm Adventist I can come here and I tell you, this is my second time to be on this platform. I was one of the speakers in the last Congress in 19, in 2009, I believe. And it was in the morning, early in the morning, five o'clock, I spoke here in this platform and my term interpreter was Jerry, Jerry Pataliko. Thank you for giving me time to speak this morning. Brother and sister, this morning have we come to the word of the Lord. Let us bow our head and pray. Our loving Father, this morning have we come to your throne of grace. Lord, we are going to see the power of Jesus. We are going to see your presence through our faith, through your word, Lord. Empty our heart. Thank you for calling us to serve you. 
May the power of the Holy Spirit from above be upon each one of us. That whatever your word that we are going to deliver, Lord, will be only for your own glory. Lord, thank you this morning. Bless is one of us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I was born in Ratahan, where my hometown is. Ratahan is in uh, Minahasa, in Manado. Uh, I believe uh, Pastor Asoy has been there, has been there in my hometown. I bring you greetings this morning from all members and pastors, teachers, workers, missionaries from East Indonesia Union Conference. Our members is about 114,000, maybe one third of this uh, union membership. 114,000 members. Greetings from all of my union to each one of you. I really, I really enjoy staying here. It has been my thrill experience enjoying the beautiful music, special number, and a speaker from the beginning up to this time. I believe God has called each one of us to come closer to Jesus day, day by day in our uh, life. Let's come to the Bible. The Bible said that God has called us to be his people. I am happy that I am a servant of Adventist. My father is Adventist. He already passed away. My grandfather was also Adventist. And my great grandfather also Adventist. So I am the fourth generation in Adventist family. Amen. Amen. Jesus called us to be his people. And if we read in the Bible, we know all the, all the story in the Bible. We know the verse in the Bible. 1, 1 Peter 2, verse 9. The Bible said, Jesus said, You are a chosen people. We are a chosen people. You are a chosen people. That you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. We are his people. We are so happy to be his people in the world. When we read the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, verse, verse 4, Bible said, God has chosen us. He chose us in Jesus. He has chosen us in Jesus, in Him, before the foundation of the world. God the Father, in Jesus, through Jesus, in Him, has chosen us to be His people before we were born, even. And in verse 4, the Bible said, Thank God, because Jesus came to this world, and in him we have redemption through his own blood and by the blood of jesus we are healed remember during the old testament times the bible speaks about the israelites when they start for the first time with the passover the Lord said to Moses, When I see the blood, when I see the blood at the door of the Israelites, I will pass over the door and I will not destroy the people in the house because by the blood at the door. When I see the blood, I will pass over the door. The blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Remember Jesus. 
He is the power God. He is the God, our God, that has a lot of power. And in verse 13 and 14, Bible says, You were sealed. You were marked in Him with the seal of the Holy Spirit. You can see in this chapter very clear. God the Father has chosen us before the foundation of the world. Jesus through his own blood has redeemed us from all our, our unrighteousness. And through his Holy Spirit, through his Spirit, the Spirit sealed us by the power of the Lord. We thank God for this salvation. Salvation through God the Father, through His Son, and through the Holy Spirit. This morning, I'd like to bring your attention to the Bible, which is found in Luke 5, verse 1 to 11. I'd like to stress on verse 5. So this morning, my topic is, Nevertheless, at thy word. Because you say so, nevertheless at thy word. Luke 5, verse 1 to 11. When I was in uh, my hometown, I used, to, I used to go fishing. It is one of my favorite things to do when I was uh, in my hometown. At the time, I was in elementary school. And uh, what I did, I would go and find some worms and get down there on that bank of the river and catch big old fish and sometimes I experienced there were times when I caught a lot of fish and other times when I didn't catch much at all I enjoy yeah, I enjoy fishing the time and I remember my experience is similar almost similar to the experience of Christ's disciple when the Jesus was still on earth. You will see that Christ's disciple, they were in the boat before Jesus called them to be his disciple. We know of all of them, that most of them, most of his disciples were born by the lakes, by the Sea of Galilee. Say so they know how to be. Uh, to catch the fish in the lake they were born by the lake sea of galilee and they know the beginning and the ending of how to catch the fish let's come to the bible the disciples of jesus were in the boat it was a place of closeness up until then, Peter's boat had been a place of toil, labor, and frustration. But when Jesus climbed on board, that board became a place of personal closeness with Jesus and fellowship with him. It was a place where all who were on board could be close to Jesus. I can imagine the experience of Peter when he was with Jesus in the boat. That is exactly a picture of what the church is in today's world. The church consists of a brick and mortar structure situated beside the highway until the people of God enter into the building. But when this building is occupied by the people of God, this building is the place of His people. This structure becomes a place of closeness and a place of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We know in the church, there are so many problems happening in the church, especially when president of the conference or even your own president. I tell you, my friends, becoming a president is not, is not a joke. 
is not an easy job. Becoming a president of the conference means you have to accept the reality. When someone come and knock at your door in the office, 99.9 percent people will bring you problems and problems maybe in this union wala problema banyak problema many problems but i tell you the church is a special place it is special because of who show up here the redeemer is here the redeemed are here the church is special because of what we do here the sovereign god is praised the son of god is preached the sons of god are perfected amen it is special because what we find here there is food for our souls there is food for our life and there is fellowship with jesus thank god for the church it is a light in the darkness it is a place of refuge and revival for very hearts it is a place of hope and help but may we ever love the church support the church pray for the church and defend the church i am happy that now we are in the boat we are in the ship the ship called the seven day adventist ship and i tell you this morning stay in the boat never leave the boat outside of the boat there are dangerous animals waiting for you lion waiting for you stay in the boat if you stay in the boat you are safe in the boat in the church it was a place of instruction jesus turned that humble vessel into a pulpit from which he preached the word of god those on board and those were given the privilege of hearing jesus christ instruct them in the things of the lord from the opening of the sabbath school up to the second first service we received the word of the lord the word of god should be our goal and our commitment biblical teaching should be the hallmark of every true church preaching is about getting into the word of god and exposing the truth contained within it preaching is not about how loud you can preach you can tell preaching is not how long you can preach preaching is not how how you know how much you know and how much you shout preaching is about declaring the whole counsel of the word of the lord here is what god says to preacher of the word in second timothy verse 2 first chapter 4 verse 2 bible says preach the word be instant in season out of season reproof rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine the church it was a place of irritation remember peter Peter is obvious, obviously irritated because he and other the other fishermen there had feast all night and accomplished nothing. Remember the Bible says these men were tired, they were frustrated and they were defeated. They had done everything in the power to be successful and they had failed. First to tell us that the fishermen were not even in their boat but were on the shore washing their nets they were engaged in good work and busy work but they were not accomplished the greater work catching fish the boat that day had become a place of irritation in the church does that ever sound like the church to you 
Do you ever get frustrated? Do you ever get irritated? Do you ever just get tired? Come week after week, we sing, we pray, we preach, we testify, we shout, and we go home. Peter already experienced. They were professional, but they still struck out that night. We know how to fish around here, don't we? We have the right bite. We have the right tackle. And we know where the fish are, but we just cannot seem to get them in our boat. And sometimes it is frustrating. Wouldn't you agree with me? Remember, the word of Jesus, a command from Jesus. Jesus issues a twofold command to Peter and the man in the boat. He tells them to launch out into the deep and let down the net for the cats. Go into the deep. There was nothing wrong with the vessel. The boat was sea worthy, and Jesus ordered them to take it out into deeper water. Brother and sister, this morning, when we see the situation, it is impossible to get the fish because Peter experienced the whole night. He got nothing. But remember, the vessel needed to go where the fish were. Jesus knew that the fish were not where the boat was. The fish were not in the shallows. And they certainly were not in the boat. They were out there in the deep. The fish are out there in the deep waters of the world. And if we are going to draw the net over them, we are going to help to get out there where they are. We can pray and ask God to save souls. But until we go to the where the souls are, we will see very first be safe. And net will never fill up with fish until it is first let down again. And net will never fill up with fish until it is first let down. Those fellows, Peter and his fellows, could have washed those nets, mended those nets, and hauled those nets all over the lake, but they would have never caught a fish until those nets were first let down. They could have bought the finest nets money could buy, and still they would not have caught any fish until the nets were let down. They could have studied all the newest ways for casting and robbing nets. But until they let the nets down into the deep water, they would have caught no fish. Brothers and sisters, this morning, there is a very important message to us this morning. Jesus said to Peter, We seem to think that as long as we have the right Bible, the right kind of preaching. A preacher might have a doctorate degree in preaching or homiletics. We might have the right kind of music. We might have the right kind of standard. We might wear the right kind of clothes and sign the right things. Then fees are guaranteed. And say to the Lord, I have everything. Everything is guaranteed. Friends, nothing could be farther from the truth. Church folk talk about witnessing. Learn new methods of witnessing. Develop services and build aquarium where any fish would be happy and comfortable and we wait for them to swim in. The truth is they don't and they are not going to. When Peter hears the Lord's command, he remains Jesus. Peter said, 
Those men had to work so hard. They were toiled means to labor with wearisome effort. All night long, these men had let down and pulled in those nets over the hill and over again. And they had taken nothing which went not even one. All night long they had fish and had not even caught a single, even a single sardine. All they wanted was to go home and get some sleep and forget about that long, awful, wasted night. He is saying, Lord, we are loaded on. Tried that it didn't work. We are professional. I tell you, Peter, when he was born, he knows the lake. When he was youth, he knows the lake. He knows how to swim and everything. Peter, he is professional. We know that what we are doing and no offense. Peter said, Jesus, but aren't you a carpenter? You are only carpenter. I'm professional. I know the beginning and the ending. Leave the fishing to us. We tried it already. It didn't work. There is no use in going out there again. It is sad, but Peter sounds like a typical Adventist like us. We look at the programs we have tried in the past and see very little, if any, success. And we say, there is no use to try that again. We know how to do it and we tried it, but it just didn't work at all. But you know, by the way, God can work in spite of our doubts if we will obey Him anyway. We come to verse 5 of Luke 5, verse 5. This is the most important. This is, we come to the point of no return. What Bible says, Simon says, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, teacher, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. This the topic this morning. But he said, Nevertheless, at thy word, but you say so, I will let down the net. Let's say it together. Say it together. One, two, three. Nevertheless, at thy word. Again, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. But because you say so, I will let down the net. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. We have left Jesus out the picture. We will fail. But when he is followed, there will always be success. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. Philippians 4, 13. Amen. A night of struggle. A night of failure. But a morning of surrender. A morning of success. Amen. They had feasts all night long, had caught not so much as a single little fish. They are tired and frustrated. But this morning, the daytime, when they let down the net, success. What made difference? The difference is obedience to Jesus, even when Peter did not want to do what the Lord asked him to do. But a miracle involving the fish. What happened to the old Peter? With Jesus, he was success. And the new Peter, now he is no longer the old Peter, but now he is the new Peter, a converted Peter. God called him amazing, amazingly. God used Peter at the day of Pentecost. You know all the story of Peter. Peter was a successful man. 
When Peter and others saw what Jesus had done, those rough, crude fishermen fell at the feet of Jesus in humble worship. They were amazed at his power and they glorified him for what he had done. Bible says in miracle, Peter, man, he see the new thing happen. Peter used by Jesus. All Peter who bowed at feet of Jesus on the ship later stood up at Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and preached the word of the Lord. And 3,000 souls were saved. Amen. Today, the net is our vessel. God will help us. We too can see a miracle involving the future if we will go with Jesus and cast where he tells us. But God help the next generation if we don't. I tell you this morning, brother and sister. Today, nowadays, God needs a generation. God needs a nevertheless generation. Listen to the word of the Lord. If we believe his word, success will happen. Launch out into the deep. When the Lord called Peter to let down his net, he didn't want to. However, he did what the Lord said to do in spite of his own wants and wishes. The result were far better than he could have ever imagined. Friend, the same blessing wait for you if you will do what Peter did. Jesus has spoken in this word. Now I ask you, will you let down your nets at the word of the Lord? He is calling someone to be safe. Will you let down your net? He is calling his children to faithfulness and surrender. Will you let down your net? He is calling husband and wife to a renew commitment to one another. Will you let down your net? He is calling his people back to the Bible and to the church. Will you let down your net? You may not like what the Lord is calling you to do today. But will you join Peter and say, Master, we have toiled on the night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. We need to bring souls for Christ. We need to continue sharing the mess of the Lord. For we are going to be saved by Jesus. When we bring people in the boat, in the boat, in the vessel, in the church, we are going to be, bring more souls for Christ when he comes. Because the world is going to the end. This world is going to be destroyed by the Lord. Bible says in the old, God told to Noah, Noah, please build for me the ark. Please build for me the ark. That people in your time might be saved. Build for me the ark made of wood the ark is not made of iron not made of gold not made of silver but please made for me the ark made of wood that people might be saved and those who enter into the ark of wood are saved it was in the ark but now in this time in order for us to be saved, all people has come to the cross of Calvary, the cross which is made of wood. Amen. The cross of Jesus. The cross of Jesus will save us from our failure. The cross of Christ will give us salvation. When Jesus was in a Gethsemane, he prayed to the Father. Father, if possible, may this cup pass over me, but be thy will. And Bible, Mr. White says, when Christ pray in the Garden of Gethsemane, the blood comes out for his body. When Christ was standing before the pilot and great multitude, they beat him 
and the blood comes out from his body when jesus was torn give torn on the calvary they give torn on his head the blood comes out from his head when the soldiers of rome beat him use shouting the blood and water comes out from his body four times the blood comes out from jesus four times in the garden of Gethsemane, before pilate when they give torn on the head and when the soldier of the roman beat him with his sharp things but this blood will cleanse us when i see the blood i will pass over at the door this morning jesus is calling us to serve him no one can let down your net but you will you obey him this morning from the moment we are safe until the day we are taken home we are to casting the gospel net we are fisher of men i don't know about you but i want to see some fish in the net brother and sister this morning if the lord has spoken to you like he has spoken to me through his passage then i invite you to join me as i bow before him and ask him to take us on a fishing trip worth remembering is my prayer for this morning shall we bow our head and pray heavenly father thank you for the time being thank you for you have promised us to be your people thank you for calling us to serve you lord may the spirit of the lord be upon each one of us may the spirit may the word of the lord may the word said by peter in the past nevertheless at thy word we will let down cast the net lord give us power as we go back to our respective place may you give us power to do the work of the lord bring souls for your kingdom this we believe by your power many are going to be saved thank you lord this morning for blessing is one of us we pray in christ's name amen